right here beside me on the Tech Yes build desk is something that needs a bit of Tech Yes loving. We got here a Fractal Define case, also a Z68 motherboard. It's also got some memory installed, a CPU and a power supply. So we don't even know if this works, but I thought why not take you guys through the whole process, what goes through my mind, what goes into the cleaning and sort of the organization of getting something like this up to scratch and replacing dirty and broken parts if they need to be replaced. So strap your capes on, so strap your used PC parts, so strap your used potato cleaning capes on. Let's get on with it. Welcome back to Tech Your City. What we've got here is a really dirty fractal design. Define R3 or R4, I don't know, but there's actually cobwebs down the bottom too. So that's how filthy this thing is. Even dirt underneath the DVD drive. Uh, but the motherboard itself is filthy as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing apart piece by piece. And this is going to save you time in the long run, essentially. What you're going to do is by taking it all apart piece by piece, if something's faulty, which I'm guessing something is, whether it be the memory, the motherboard, the CPU, or the power supply, then what we can do is we can uh, find that piece individually, see what's uh, faulty, and then replace it, but also save ourselves time in the long run. Because if we just give it a quick and dirty cleanse, and something's wrong, then we will be pulling it apart anyway and essentially wasting time. But also these drive bays as well, they're filthy. So I think this is the best way to approach this. Alcohol wipes in here, everywhere, and just go around this whole build and just really give it a nice tech, yes, love and cleanse. So we've got all our parts laid out here on the table and this is a Z68 from Azus taking a close up of this thing. You can just see how filthy it is. And so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna give it a nice data vac session also on this and the power supply and the case. And what this will do is just lift up all that initial dust that you can just see, it's just so filthy. I don't know how it got this filthy. When we're probably gonna replace the cooler as well, the stock Intel cooler, because that's just garbage and it's just so filthy that it'll take too long for what it's worth. And we've got the power supply here, which is actually too, not bad, it's decent. It's a 500 watt power supply, and it should be ample fine for a 3770K and a GTX 1060. Uh, looking inside this fractal design case as well, that's filthy as well. So hopefully the data vac can lift off all the initial dust and the alcohol wipes can come in. And then after that, we hopefully won't have to use brake cleaner if we don't need to, because the stuff is expensive. And I generally only use it on GPUs and motherboards just to really clean out itty gritties. So now you may have these stickers and you notice how much of a pain in the ass they are to get off sometimes. So what you can do with them is just drench them in WD-40 and then leave them overnight if you've got time because uh, what will happen is it'll soak in and then it's just so easy to get them off. So that was actually a tip from a viewer who let me know about that. So it was an extra function of WD-40. So thanks for that. It actually really works well. So the DataVac really brought these parts up and they're looking really good now. Uh, all we have to do is go over with alcohol wipes and see how they come up. I don't think they will need brake cleaner uh, because after the alcohol wipes, the WD-40 should get off anything else and make them look like brand new. So what are we waiting for? Time to get these alcohol wipes to work. So what we're going to do now is uh, get our 3770K and delit it and then drop it in here. But before we do that, we might actually just test everything out, make sure the BIOS is up to date, make sure the motherboard's working, also the memory's working as well. Mm -hmm. 
And the good news is the motherboard works absolutely fine, but we did need this BIOS update. This is pretty important because if we put all this build together with the 3770K and then booted it up, we would have had to have taken the cooler off and take the CPU apart and put the old one in and update the BIOS again, which would have wasted a lot of time. So here it is here, the preliminary build. We actually haven't done the cable management yet and there's a reason for that. We're just gonna boot it up, make sure everything works. Uh, and if something doesn't work, we can change it over quickly. Uh, also this case itself, it still does need some feet underneath. So we're gonna go to the Bunnings warehouse now and go pick up four feet for it and just try and finish it off. But we're gonna make sure it boots first. So we're gonna turn the power on right now and just do a quick check. And then after that, we can finish it off. So here it is here, the finished product, and it is looking so damn good. As you can see, it is just a world of a difference from what it was before. We've also added in a 120 gigabyte SSD, so that's about 50 Australian dollars. Added in an extra eight gigabytes of RAM as well to make it really contemporary with 16 gigabytes of memory. Uh, added in a GTX 1066 gigabyte, swapped the i5-2500 for a 3770K. And we're using this AliExpress cooler here. This is running you about $30, but they do perform very well. Previously, I was gonna use the 212X from Cooler Master, but that was shorting out the motherboard. Really bizarre problem. I smelled a little bit of smoke coming off that as well, so I stopped using that cooler. Uh, we're also reusing the power supply here. Uh, and we're reusing the motherboard, reusing the case, and using a one gigabyte S, uh, hard drive that was donated to the channel as well. So this PC all up is just really going to scream. Hopefully it's gonna scream when we start overclocking it. It's just gonna start smashing those games absolutely no problems but without a side let's put the side panel on and see how it runs and you see here we just got dirty towels broken zip ties i decided to take these things off as they were just loose waste of time trying to put them back on in my opinion and uh this here is the dirty intel stock cooler we're actually just going to chuck this out because it's just so so filthy i actually haven't seen one this filthy before i don't believe at least not on a Z68 motherboard. So that's gonna go on the bin as well because the time you're gonna spend on that cleaning that, it's not even worth it in my opinion. But yeah, that's the rubbish pile out of this. So here we got the CPU now running at 4.2 gigahertz. And I know you're thinking 4.2 gigahertz, that's a pretty bad overclock for a 3770K. And yes, it actually is, but the temperatures are really good. Not even hitting 60 degrees on full stress test here. And the noise is actually really quiet. So I'm really loving this setup. Uh, however, this is one problem that I've seen only once before and I haven't talked about it because I've only seen it once before and I couldn't exactly identify what it was. But now I have, and that is just simply the CPU 
at least one of the cores is not running up to full par, at least at 4.5 gigahertz, 4.3 or 4.4. At 4.5 gigahertz, it would uh, be at 1.35-ish volts, and it would just uh, crash immediately with a blue screen. And then 4.4 and 4.3 would give me Google Snap errors when I uh, loaded up Google Chrome, for example, a web page. And so that's pretty indicative of just the CPU either being uh, faulty or just not being able to maintain those overclocks. Uh, so that's a rare sort of thing that happens. And I've seen it once before, now I've seen it for the second time, just with higher overclocks here. So it's at 4.2 gigahertz though. It's running really nicely at these temperatures. Noise is really good. Now it's time to jump into some games and see what this setup can do. And we've also got an extra 100 megahertz on the uh, GPU itself, and also a little bit of a boost on the uh, memory speeds on the GPU too. Also, the memory is real mediocre. We managed though to get it uh, to 1600 megahertz with pretty loose timings uh, at around 1.58 volt, but it's really old stuff, so hopefully it does the job. So here it is right here, the restored PC. It is running so smooth and so good at games. 1440 by 3440 ultra wide resolution. Absolutely no problems for this thing. Keep in mind, I did have to drop a few settings in some of those games, but it was a very enjoyable experience. And this was, I mean, half the parts in this PC were otherwise parts that uh, people just did not want. They'd rather chuck in the bin because they just want to go up and upgrade to the latest and greatest. Yet something like this will perform just as good as the latest and greatest CPU and motherboard with a GTX 1066 gigabyte. We're just really revitalizing and rejuvenating what we have here to not only make it look really good, but also perform really good in the current titles today. If you have any questions or comments about this restored and refurbed potato, then let me know in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this one and stick around because the used monthly parts hunt is coming very soon. We've already picked up a few deals and there's hopefully some more to come. Catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye. Ultra wide 1344, 3440. But with that aside, it's time to put this thing in the paces. And that was only one of the many PC parts that were donated here. If you guys enjoy this refurb stuff, then there's a lot more of it to come here. And to be honest, I really enjoy bringing up these old used potatoes that were otherwise neglected back into something that looks brandy new.